Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be explaining some of the advantages and the disadvantages of power hammers. Thanks for watching. Okay, here we are at my power hammer. Today I would like to take and start explaining to guys, since there seems to be a very misinformed misconception out there of what a power hammer is, what a power hammer does, and what it's supposed to be used for. A lot of smiths, just like I was just starting into the field of blacksmithing, we wanted to take and get a power hammer for one purpose and one purpose only. What we wanted a power hammer for was essentially to take make really long, insanely long tapers. It's meant to mash big old boogery metals of steel. And that is the whole purpose of a power hammer. Although they can do that, that thought process is incorrect. A power hammer is a tool. And like so many tools, a power hammer is meant for a very specific job or specific purpose. A power hammer does not make you a better smith. Doesn't. I don't care how big of a power hammer you have. If you suck at smithing, you're still going to suck at the end of the day. Your skills won't improve on a power hammer. If you don't have the logic that it takes to understand how to move the material and how it best moves around and how the material is flowing under each hammer blow and what each individual hand process does, a power hammer is essentially a dead tool to you. Because you're going to believe that a power hammer, the only thing it's supposed to do is mash big, large billets of steel. That's not... that's such a farce, in my opinion. So before I go into too much detail, and I get a lot of hate because they say, who are you? You don't even have a real power hammer, or a real man's power hammer, you know, something big and huge, and, you know, I can mash four pound billets of steel, which I have no ungodly need to do. Although if I had a power hammer that big, I'd probably still do small work on it. I, I don't like working with big chunks of steel. Now, they are nice whenever you're trying to do an anvil or maybe forge your own, but there's very few guys who would be able to forge a power, forge an anvil under a power hammer anyhow uh, to reasonable quality. This is my power hammer. I built this thing from ground up. This was spurred off of my original Da Vinci cam hammer. And I thought at that time I needed something to help my ironwork along because it always seemed like the guys that were getting the bigger jobs, the larger contracts, they had really large power hammers. And so this kind of came out of that and it ballooned out of that and I designed it around what I believed a power hammer was made for, which was drawing out long lengths of bar, texturing edges, breaking down edges of things, double shouldering stuff, all very true. When I design this, and yeah, I'll have plans available soon. I still have my guy working on it. When I designed this hammer, I designed it very specifically for a specific purpose, and it was to break down material, larger material down to smaller sizes. So the whole design of this hammer is for that purpose. Designing that way, I didn't need removable dies. I didn't need very large dies. I needed essentially fullering dies, dies that were to be able to take and do that purpose of drawing down material. I didn't do completely radius fullering dies because I still wanted the option to be able to draw a tenon down on something or set down a shoulder or material. What I have found out in the year and a half that I have had this hammer built now and that I've ran at least a thousand hours of run time, maybe a thousand hours, I don't know if it's really that much, but you know. Uh, probably not. A good couple, well, two, three hundred, something like that. I'm not good at math, apparently. But what I have found out is the type of work that I do would be better conducive to a much larger surface area for making tools, making tooling. And the power hammer would be a lot better used for me with larger dies, much larger dies.
and a much heavier weight. Not to go smashing big builds of steel, that doesn't interest me, but to take and be able to use tooling underneath it and work top tools and things of that nature. So if you undergo building either one of my power hammers out there, or you're looking at building somebody else's like an Appalachian style power hammer or a Clay Spencer slash Ray Klontz tire hammer, and yes, he was the original designer. I know it's all over the world now as a popular design and everybody's made up their own renditions, but that's essentially the guy who should get the credit for it, for putting the wherewithal together to create that power hammer. If you're choosing one of those hammers and before you go out and you spend the money that you're going to spend in buying the steel and the effort and the, and the time and the energy and the resources that you're going to put into building a hammer, either one of mine or someone else's, you need to think to yourself very critically, what do I plan on using this power hammer for and will this tool help me accomplish those goals? There are no one-all beat-all hammers. Not happening. The holy grail right now of hammers is essentially self-contained power hammers because they seem to be the most versatile. But there's mechanical hammers that are just as versatile and have just as much control. I particularly favor the helve type hammers. I feel that there's a lot of control you can get with them as opposed to something more like the little giants style power hammers for mechanical, I feel they have less control. Because the original little giant power hammers, they were designed to beat out plowshares. That's why they had one small die on top and a bigger die on bottom. They were meant to draw out the edge or the blade edge and to resharpen points on plowshares. That's it. That was their original design purpose. They made the tool for its purpose and it did it very well. That's why when you see guys running, trying to run two inch stock under a 25 pound little giant, it's not going very well for them. Wasn't designed for it. They need to have a different hammer that was built for it. So keep that in mind whenever you're going to purchase a power hammer. Don't get all hyped up on you need the largest hammer in the world. Because a lot of you don't. Maybe you have a S hook business and you just need to draw out some tapers on nothing more than 3 8 inch rod. Here's my only shameless self-plug here. My revisited design, DaVinci Cam Hammer, will work for you perfectly and flawlessly every day. That's perfect for you. If you're trying to move one inch billets of steel or larger, that's not going to be your hammer. Not going to be your hammer. It wasn't what its design purpose was. Its design purpose came out of necessity to try to do production work on hooks. I designed that hammer and it worked perfectly for that. But then as my taste changed and as my shop evolved, so did my hammers and so did my tooling choices. So there are no one-all, beat-all power hammers. Just like there are no one-all, beat-all hammers. If you're using a three and a half, four, five pound sledgehammer to work on a tiny little scroll, you're wasting a lot of energy for nothing. They make smaller hammers for that. Consequently, if you're trying to use a one ounce hammer against a four pound block of steel, you're wasting your energy and your effort. They make a hammer for that. So, don't get trapped into thinking you need to buy one style hammer or, there's, or that a power hammer will make you a professional smith. You will have arrived in some sort of stardom and somehow, some way, you'll be a much better person. That's simply not true. For you new guys out there, be focusing really hard and put all your attention and your devotion at your anvil and getting the skills that you're needing and to understand the way your material is moving under your hammers and be efficient at it. And then design and build a power hammer or buy a power hammer that will suit your purposes of what you need it to do. For efficiency. A power hammer increases efficiency and it reduces the run time on your body. That's what power hammers are for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, there's always the thumbs down. That always works too. This is my thoughts on a power hammer. 
Maybe you disagree with me. That's okay. Chuck those comments down in the comment section below. You know, I love I love to hear the opinions. I can't say that I'll agree with all of them, but you know, I love hearing them anyhow. I love hearing you know different different guys chime in and uh, give their experience on these things. And you know, even you guys who don't have power hammers yet, you know, let me know your thoughts. What you think a power hammer is supposed to be? Uh, I greatly greatly appreciate hearing those too. In some videos that are going to be coming up before long, I'm going to be doing some diff I'm going to be showing some advantages of this power hammer. One thing that holds this power hammer design back, and this is 100% transparency, is the small dies. But we've already been over that. But I'm going to show you where those excel. And you know, hopefully you guys will enjoy the videos. I'm not going to be uh, scared of using a power hammer in any of my videos. Uh, you know. Once you have a power hammer, you like to use them. So, I mean, that's what they're meant for. So, anyways, that's it for today, guys and gals. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't, that's okay, too. Remember to hit that little notification bell. I'm posting twice a day and seven days a week. And I hope I'm putting out enough good information or at least entertaining information for you all out there. So, thank you all for watching. God bless you all. Have a great day today.